Hello, this is Ruth Ann. Welcome to my channel. I apologize for having been gone for so long, but I've been um, terribly sick. I've had a respiratory virus and I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to finish this video because I've had such a terrible cough and I know my voice is off, but I feel well enough now. I think I can um, complete this video, I hope. So I have several empties here to go through and even though I've been sick I've still been going through perfume like crazy I've not lost my sense of smell so if you're a fellow perfume addict you know what I'm talking about so I am just going to get started first up I have one of my absolutely favorite perfumes of all time um, this used to be by Prince Machabelli and let's see who manufactures this PDC brands and honestly, I'm not sure. I always purchase this on Amazon. And the Skin Musk Cologne Spray can also be found pretty much at every Walmart and drugstore. I think it's just one of those that's just readily available. Very inexpensive, long-lasting, at least six hours is what I get. It's just a very happy, beautiful, kind of a, a cross between a yellow musk and an Egyptian musk scent a skin scent and that would so the name of it is perfect in being skin musk however um what i would recommend is don't let the wonky kind of tacky bottle fool you this is a very grown-up fragrance it could be used any age it can go anywhere this is a scent that um you could easily wear to work and in perfume free zones it just smells like beautiful sun-kissed clean skin it's a very natural fragrance, and it's one of my absolute favorites. So now usually when I purchase this, I buy three bottles at a time. So I have two other backups already available. So that's Skin Musk. Next up, I have a Middle Eastern fragrance. This is called Rihanna Secret Musk. All right, and I don't remember the manufacturer right off hand but I will put it in the um, description box below I'll look it up before I post this um, video so this is I was hoping for a pure musk and I know with Middle Eastern fragrances that's usually not the case that you're going to get a real musk this is a white musk blended with fruity notes so whenever I would spray this, it smelled just like fruity pebbles. So when I was a kid back in the 70s, that was one of my absolutely favorite um, cereals for breakfast. And it's um, fruity pebbles. It's not Fruit Loops. They're different, um, as you know. So it basically is a white musk with just an, a mixture of candied fruits. It's long lasting. It's strong. It's very pretty. I use this primarily as a bedding and room spray because it is so potent um, and long lasting and it really would, I could spray it on my sheets and my bedding and it would last for hours, sometimes even longer than a day. And I don't really want to smell like Fruity Pebbles, so that's why I used it primarily that way. But it is really pretty. If you like long lasting, sweet, fruity fragrances, I highly recommend this. It's also quite um, affordable. And again, I'll have the maker of that in the description box. Next up, I have Al Rehab's French Coffee. And I know that this is a fragrance that's really made a splash recently in the perfume community on YouTube. And it's very nice. So I'm just going to add my two cents here. I'm not going to go on and on about it. Um, it really does smell like French coffee, but it's a sweet French coffee. So you really get the coffee note, and that's what's nice about it is in so many coffee fragrances, it's so subtle and it's in the background where this one is very much up front and it's a very coffee fragrance. Like if you, I sprayed this and I wore it into the um, elevator and someone said, oh, someone's got a coffee. And it was really this, this perfume. It's not just pure coffee, however. It's more like a mocha. Any kind of a sweet um, coffee drink that you would get at a, a Starbucks or a caribou coffee, that's what this smells like. So it's not pure coffee. It's more of a sweet blended cocoa or a mocha. It's very nice. Um, I bought this on um, eBay, and I think $9 a bottle, so I bought three. 
and I really am enjoying it. And it does last quite well, maybe four to six hours. So I do highly recommend El Rehab's French Coffee. Next up, I have a Latafa, and this is Ana Abied. And this is supposed to be a dupe for some other high-end perfume, and I don't know what perfume that is. So I enjoy dupe perfumes, but I don't necessarily pay attention to what they're duping because I don't really care as long as I enjoy the fragrance and I don't have to spend a fortune. So I bought the smaller bottle because I didn't want to invest in the big one. And this is just a sweet white musk fruity floral. And there's nothing really special about it. Um, it's a small, smaller bottle. I used it when I traveled over the weekend. It's got a little bit of oody funk in it. And so that's why I don't plan to repeat purchase this. Um, but if you don't mind that, I, do, I don't think it's a safe blind buy because of that funky oud in the background. It's not prominent, but it is there. And it bothered me. So that's why I don't plan to, to uh, replace it. So again, this is Latafa's Ana Ibied. Next up, I have two bottles of the same fragrance. And this is called Aji. And, or Aji, I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced, but this is by Revlon. And it's an old discontinued fragrance. So I'm not going to go on and on about it, except for this was a recommendation from a viewer. And it is just a blended musk fragrance. It's probably got some dry florals, but it's primarily a something along the lines of Charlie or um, any of the classic musk fragrances, which would include Jovan musk, uh, uh, fragrances like that. You get the drift. If you're familiar with musk fragrances, this also has some aldehydes. And it's very, very nice. It's a bit dirty, um, not in a bad way. But what I mean by that is it's very much carnal and like a physical, almost, you almost, when you spray this, feel like, ooh, this smells a bit like I might need a shower. You know, there's, there's a bit, when I say dirty, that's what I mean. It's a body odor, but it's not, it's almost like it crosses the line into stinky body odor, but it doesn't. It doesn't go there. So it's it's a very physical fragrance. It's very pretty. Um, the only problem I had with these was the both of the sprayers malfunction. They leaked. And so when I would spray them, I would have to use a cloth to catch what would drip. And in the end, by the time I finished the bottles there, I couldn't hardly spray anything out of the sprayer. It was just dripping. So I'm assuming that's because these are older discontinued fragrances and, and these um, lower cost perfume houses don't put a lot of money into their sprayers. So it is pretty, but it is discontinued. So, And because the sprayers didn't work, I would assume that they, none of them would work if I were to repurchase. So I don't plan to repurchase, but it is pretty. And I have several more here, so I better hurry up. So this is Britney Spears' prerogative. This is supposed to be a unisex fragrance. To me, this smells like you took fantasy and you added a masculine note, which is escaping me right now. Um, the name of that note is kind of a um, aromatic herbal kind of a scent. But what that does, instead of making it masculine, is it really makes it more fresh. So imagine if you had fantasy with a bit of a freshness to it. I didn't feel like this was at all masculine. Um, it was just had a bit of freshness. So I really did enjoy it. It's sweet. It has that fruity floral quality of fantasy, but it has that fresh note in it. And I really liked it. Um, I had got this on absolute basement clearance. I want to say at Walmart for about $10. And it was nice, so I do recommend it, but you've really got to like that fantasy DNA. Okay, so that's Britney Spears' prerogative. Next up, I have Elizabeth Arden Splendor. And I've talked about this several times on this channel. I believe this fragrance has been discontinued, but I don't think it was very popular. And the reason I say that is because you can still pick it up on eBay really, really inexpensively. 
This is a floral, old school floral perfume. A lot of people would call it a granny fragrance. I happen, I happen to be a granny <laughs> and I happen to love women of all ages. So I don't think that that is a, um, an insult. So it has a strong floral, dry, powdery quality to it. Um, it's old school. You have to like classic fragrances, but it's also really good for year round. This would be a great signature scent if you like floral fragrances. And again, it's very dry and powdery. And I know it seems like nowadays a lot of people don't like that kind of quality in a floral. But if you find that you like classic florals, you could pick up these Splendor bottles for under $20. In fact, I think I only paid maybe $14 for this bottle, and it's a four-ounce bottle. So obviously, I love it a lot. This is, I want to say, my third bottle that I've used. So you can tell I really, really like this fragrance. To me, this is this is class in a bottle. This is ladylike class. Really, really beautiful, and I, I highly recommend it. Next up, I have the OG Charlie. So one thing I want to explain about Charlie is people often confuse the original Charlie with Charlie Blue. Now I want to point out that they are, they are different fragrances. Charlie Blue is a flanker of Charlie, and they do have similarities, but they are different. Okay, so Charlie Blue is, if you, okay, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to start with Charlie. Charlie is a oak moss fragrance that is blended with um, yellow dry florals and a lot of aldehydes and oak moss. Oak moss, okay, did I go over that? It also has a lot of amber. The amber makes Charlie, I'm talking about this one now, very creamy and smooth. And if you took out everything creamy and smooth in Charlie and then you amped up the oak moss. So oak moss tends to be a little bitter, almost a little moldy smelling. It kind of goes in that direction without actually going straight up into mold. It's like it's going there, but it doesn't quite get to it where it's offensive. That's Charlie Blue. Charlie is very ambery, and then the oak moss is in the background. But Charlie Blue is very oak moss forward, and it's much harsher and harder on the nose. So you've really got to like a lot of oak moss to like Charlie Blue. If Charlie Blue is too harsh for you, but you still kind of want to experience that DNA, then I would recommend the OG, the original Charlie. These are both by Revlon, obviously. Um, I want to say there's only two places I've ever found the original Charlie. The first one is on um, eBay. However, it's more expensive. The last two times I've bought the original Charlie, I found it at Walgreens. And I've bought it in gift packs. And it's usually two bottles of Charlie for about $15. And it comes in a box, a gift box during Christmas. And the last two Christmases is where I have found it at Walgreens. And you can, that's easily half the price or even less than you can find it on eBay. So if you're wondering where to find the original Charlie, because it is not easy to find, check out the gift box areas in the, um, in the drugstores around Christmas. That's where I've purchased it. So anyway, I emptied both these bottles, enjoyed them both, um, but you've got to like oak moss. <laughs> All right, next up, I'm just going to quickly go over. This is a perfume oil. This is Egyptian Musk by Wags. And um, I'll, again, have all the spellings and the names of everything in the description box. So if you're interested in purchasing these, you can um, find the, the correct names there. Um, this Egyptian Musk by Wags is the, it goes back to the 70s. And this is the best Egyptian Musk I have ever found in my life. It's the strongest and longest lasting. This is a 30 ml bottle, which is also a nice good size. And it's got this big, wide roller ball. And the roller balls that this manufacturer uses or that this provider uses is very good quality. So I usually apply it to bare skin after I get out of the tub. And then I put a musk lotion on over the oil. 
and I will smell like this for hours. And the thing about Egyptian musk and most musks in general is that their skin scents, they really, you enjoy it, but almost no one around you will smell it. They have to get right up on you to smell it because it does not project. So if this is, makes it safe to wear in perfume-free zones, it's safe to wear around people who really don't like perfume. If you don't like perfume, but you want to smell great, this is a great option. And it's also very reasonably priced. One bottle like this will last me for several months. It's very, very nice. And I highly, highly recommend it. And I have one more. And this is Love and Sure by Al Haramain. This is a dupe for some, again, really expensive perfume that I can't remember. This is a aquatic fragrance, a fresh aquatic. And it's got, again, like I said about another Middle Eastern fragrance earlier, it's got a bit of the oud funkiness in it. And so I use this as a room and bedding spray again. So right around the holidays, I had a lot of people as guests, and I was using this to freshen up the house because I had grandchildren here and and there were a lot of people here. So anyway, it was very effective for that, but it's not one that I would personally wear myself. But I know it's very popular on YouTube, and so a lot of people are wearing it and enjoying it. It was probably in the $35, $40 range, which is a bit more expensive than I like to spend, so I don't plan to replace this. Um, but it is super long-lasting. So if you like aquatics and you've heard of this fragrance and you're not sure if you wanted to try it, this is a good 24 hours long. Like you spray this and you'll smell it. And in the home and on the bedding, it was really pleasant. But it was a little too strong, a little too screechy, a little too funky for me to wear um, personally on, on myself. Um, so anyway, that's the, these are all my empties. And um, I hope, hope my hoarse voice didn't bother you too much. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.